Hey guys, welcome to Hacking Modding Monday News and Info. This is part two. Recently, we've been having to do multiple parts to these weekly segments that only come out on Monday because there's so much going on. If you are new to the channel, new to these segments, make sure you look down in the description for a brief summary. But basically, we go over stuff that I think you guys would find helpful, useful, informative, or just entertaining in the hacking, modding, homebrew, and pirate scenes. Today, we're going to be focused on Nintendo systems, primarily on the Switch, and then we'll go into other Nintendo systems if we have time. If not, then we have to do a part three tomorrow. So let's go ahead and jump right into it, starting off with the Switch stuff. And we will start off with this, a video that I posted up yesterday regarding the status of the mod chips for the Switch, the regular Switch and the Switch Lite. This was posted by Team Executor, and basically they just said that their tester kits are already going out to those two to 300 testers. So they posted up some pics here of those mod chips that are going out to them and then they're going to await their feedback. I go into more detail about it in the video. It's only about four minutes long. So if you wanna get some more information regarding that, make sure you check out that video. Link will be in the description. And here next, we have Super Mario 64 that has surfaced on the Switch. This one's similar to the one I reported on last week, where that Super Mario 64 had been ported natively to the PC. So on the PC, it required no emulation, and it installed and played like a regular Windows game. And here, basically the same concept except for the Switch. No emulation is required to play this game. It installs like a regular backed up XCI or NSP type game. And while it's far from being perfect, it is definitely playable. You can get to the end of the game. So hopefully they'll keep working with it and uh, doing updates and revisions so it gets even better. And let's see if we get more of these N64 games natively ported to the Switch. And next, continuing with the Switch, we have an update to NXHB Loader. This is what loads your NRO files and makes them work, basically your homebrews and stuff. In this update, there's nothing that shows here any specifics, but it does say there's overall improvements to the system stability and other minor adjustments have been made to make the user experience better. Just grab the hbl.nsp file and put it on your SD card. Normally, that file is located in the atmosphere folder. So make sure you find the existing one and then just replace it with this one to update and you're done. Next, we have an update to Sky NX. This is basically a way to stream your PC games to your Switch. This can be done now without the need of Android. Not only that, but you can control the games on your Switch with Joy-Cons or even with a Pro Controller. The features are listed here. All the instructions are here as well. Now, when you go over to the releases, if you are updating, make sure you grab both of the files that are here. The SkyNX zip, which is for your Switch, and then the streamer, which goes into your PC, because you will need to have both of these updated in order to use this latest version. And we continue with Simple Mod Manager, which we've talked about in the past a few times. This is for those people who use mods that required layered FS in order to function. This mod manager keeps those mods nice and organized. You can enable them, disable them, and it gives you some other nice features and options. Again, we've covered this quite a bit in the past. In this release though, there's been quite a lot that's been done to it. You can check out all the new features here and you can see the performance improvements here. The mod status check is now 300% faster. Disabling mods is 40% faster and applying the mods is now 20% faster. The NRO file is located right here. Next, we have an update to Tegra Explorer, something else that we've talked about in the past. This is a payload based file manager for your Switch. So this one is different from the other ones because it's not like a regular homebrew applet. This one is in injected into your switch like any other payload, but because you do it that way, it gives you some more options and features and controls that you normally wouldn't get 
from a regular applet type file manager and don't let the simple basic interface fool you it's still a pretty powerful tool you can grab the latest release here and check out what they've done in terms of additions and fixes and improvements and things like that the bin file you inject is located right there and next we have an update to nx activity log something else we've talked about in the past this is a homebrew app which displays your play activity but in a lot more detail and in various different ways using graphs and you can sort things to your liking i mean it's really extremely informative you can snag the latest update from here you can check out the change log they added a couple of new translations also fixed a memory leak this installs very simply like a regular nro file like any other homebrew does and next we have an update to open bore for the switch and this is something i've been wanting to do a tutorial series on and talk about it for a really long time and it's still on my list to do it's on various different platforms and it's a side scrolling engine for beat em ups shooters fighting games and other types of games if you are a fan of those types of games especially beat em ups and fighting games from the 80s and from the 90s maybe early 2000s then you'll be in heaven with this because there are so many of those types of games on here now most of those games are those old school games that have been modified in some way either new characters have been added or maybe stages added some other stuff has been enhanced in the game but basically it's not just a simple port of that game over to open bore the game has been changed in some way shape or form and sometimes you get practically a, a whole brand new game that's been built on the older games engine there's something for everybody here there's other genres as well but it mainly focuses on side scrolling beat em ups and fighting games but there are hundreds if not thousands of games out there and pretty much every single one is some type of homebrew in some way anyway when you go to the releases you can get the latest one here and what I like about this update is not only does it add rumble support which is great it also updates the version of open bore to a practically current version the current one is 7142 this one is 7087 but this version will allow you to play pretty much like 98 or 99 percent of the open board games that are out there so it's great and it works extremely well on the switch especially in handheld mode traveling around playing all them beat em ups it's fantastic and our next stop brings us over to our friends at Logic Sunrise, where there are two mods posted here for Animal Crossing New Horizons that if you play the game and have a modded switch, you can take advantage of if you want. Both revolve around the airport. The first one installs a Nookstop terminal at the airport, and this helps you because you don't have to go to your residence center to be able to print out an airline ticket. The other one puts the character of Porcinet in the airport each morning so that you can buy turnips directly from them every single day anyway there's more details here regarding both of the mods the download links are right here you simply just have to copy and paste the contents directly to the root of your sd card but if you want more information regarding these mods make sure you come here since the site is in french you'll just have to use google translate to convert everything over to english or your language of preference. Now that we're talking about Animal Crossing, let me go ahead and let you know that there's been an update to the New Horizons Save Editor. This is something that you use with your PC and you can do a bunch of stuff such as modify your character, your money, your nook miles. You can move buildings without the need for bells. You can put objects in your city. Uh, you can make patterns on your PC that you can transfer then over uh, um, to your game and a few other things. I'll put a link in the description that will bring you here to where the tool is located. When you're here to get the latest version, all you need to do is click anywhere here 
And when you do, you will see the one publish link right there. Click on it and then you'll be brought here and you'll see the download arrow right there. And that's how you get the tool so you can install it in your PC. Naturally, you will need a save file from the game. And with your modded switch, you can use something like Edison or Checkpoint or whatever in order to extract the save, modify it and put it back in. And we are done with the Switch. It's time to head on over to the 3DS scene. Our first stop brings us to this update of Open War for the 3DS. Now this is done by a different developer and I'm not gonna explain anything here because we've already covered Open War earlier for the Switch and it's the same thing. However, there of course are more hardware limitations you know when you compare the 2ds 3ds systems to the switch so yeah you have to take that into account um, but nonetheless you should still have a fairly good experience with the little systems anyway this latest update does a couple of things one of them is that it allows the 3ds's parallax layer to be enabled using the 3d slider obviously this is only for 3ds systems and not the 2ds although you can and still play this on a 2DS, preferably the new 2DS Excel models. There are two different files here you can use. The .3DS X1 is the one you'll need if you want to take advantage of this parallax layer thing. It doesn't explain anywhere where what this is. I know it does have something to do with the 3D effect of the 3DS. Anyway, you can also use the SIA version if you like. And one more thing to note here is that apparently this uses the 7142 version of OpenBore, which is the most current one. And next we have an update to Twilight Menu. We've already talked about this in the past many times before. If you are already a person who's using this and you want to know how to properly update it, you can click on the click here link to see how it's done if you are not familiar and just in case something has changed make sure you click on it this latest version among other things has a couple of bug fixes if you have never used this before this is sort of an emulator type deal for your DS, DSi, and 3DS that allows you to play ROMs from various Nintendo systems, such as the various Game Boys, uh, SNES, NES, as well as even Sega systems like the Genesis, the Master System, and some others. There are plenty of tutorials out there that show you how to properly set it up and install it for the first time in case you are new and want to try it out. And next we have an update to JKSM. This is a save manager for the 3DS. It's by the same person who makes JKSV, which is a save manager for the Switch. And that one is pretty decent. So maybe it might warrant giving this one a try if you haven't used it before. It does the usual stuff a save manager does. It dumps and restores save data for 3DS titles, as well as dump and restore extra data and a few other things. Now, one interesting thing is that when you come here to the releases, you'll notice this was released a few days ago, at least as of the making of this video, but the last time it was updated was back on December 20th of 2018. It's been two and a half years. And I wonder if people were in quarantine, if this would have gotten updated at all. All right, and as a little added bonus here, this is something that just came out and it's for the PS4 and it's Open Orbis PS4 tool chain that the Open Orbis team released. This has to do with the mirror set of tools that we covered yesterday for the PS4. So basically, this is something that's for developers only. It's for them to create homebrews and homebrew games without having to use the Sony development kit. And that means that those things they create with this will be 100% legal and Sony can't stake a legal claim to them. So as an end user, this does not mean we are going to be able to play newer games. This doesn't mean we're going to have a new exploit, you know, in a week or two or in a month that re this really doesn't have to do anything with that the end user will benefit from it in that the developers will make legal homebrews and legal homebrew games that the end user can use. But that's pretty much it, at least for now. 
and that is going to do it for this week's episode guys you know i appreciate you watching and if you found anything here informative useful helpful or maybe just entertaining or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel of course the best way to do that as always is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already much love going out to everyone be careful out there be safe but have fun and we will see you on the next one